Daniel chapter 5, from verse 22 to 30. A passage that is extremely loaded. Uh, God knows why he's asking us to read so much in one day. That's probably the first thing we we'll see here is that the job of having a successful marriage is very easy. Only one assignment for the wife and only one assignment for the husband. Nothing can be simpler. The assignment for the wife is submit. One simple word. The assignment for the husband is one word. Love. And the two words are so easy to understand. We all know what it is to submit, unless we want to pretend. Submit means you can have your own opinion, but your husband has a final say. That's all. All you could argue if you one of the highly educated ones. You know your rights, you know the Bible from beginning to the end, you know Greek, you know Hebrew. At the end of the day, your husband has the final say. If you want peace at all, submit. As for the husband, the assignment is easy, or at least so it appears, because all you have to do is love your wife. The only big problem comes when you ask the question, how much? How much love? must I have for my wife? And the Bible made it clear, as Christ loves each other, that is the big one. Mm -hmm. Because it means you have to love your wife to the extent of being willing to die for her. And that is a big one. I'm sure you've heard me say before, you can do whatever you like to me, you can criticize me, you can insult me, you can trample on me. I will only pray for you. If you mess around with my wife, I will kill you. I will kill you so thoroughly you won't even be able to rise on the resurrection money. And when some people say, but how are you going to do that? Well, I tell my daddy to send you to hell straight away. But there will be no need for you to come up for judgment. You pay you that. Someone says, how are you going to kill somebody? Won't the government uh, kill you in return? Who told you I'm going to shoot the fellow? You can only arrest me if I use any human weapon. And to mess around with my wife, then every power that God has given me will descend on you. Why? Because the Bible says you have to love your wife as Christ loved the church. That he gave 
himself for her. That's the assignment of the husband. And the love the husband is to have for the wife is reserved for her alone. Woman, submit to your own husband, not another man, but your own husband. Husband, love your own wife. That's why it should be one man, one wife. You can't have that kind of love for more than one person. But in any case, I'm sure many of us already have had hundreds of sermons at weddings. And great theologians must have explained all these things to you in detail. And so what I want to talk about briefly, in addition to, of course, what is already in the open heavens and uh, the contributions of uh, the great ones of God who, are, who have made their contribution, is the kind of church that Jesus is coming back for. It is stated clearly here. Must be a bride without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. The bride is coming back for must be spotlessly clean. Why? Because he himself was spotlessly clean. John chapter 14 verse 30, John 14 verse 30 says clearly, The praise of this world cometh and found nothing in me, nothing. Just one spot is enough to destroy the bride. In Numbers chapter 12, verse 3, Numbers 12, verse 3, the Bible says that Moses was the meekest man in the face of the earth. Very meek, very gentle. He had only one problem, only one. He has a little bit of problem with anger. When he explodes, he does so in a big way. In Exodus chapter 2, verse 11 to 15, Exodus 2, 11 to 15, he saw an Egyptian ill-treating an Israeli and he exploded. The result of the explosion, he killed the fellow, became a fugitive, and set back the deliverance of a whole nation by almost 40 years. And the one little problem. In Numbers chapter 20, verse 2 to 12, Numbers 20, verse 2 to 12, it is this explosion, just one explosion, after leading the children of Israel for almost 40 years. that led them to smite the rock instead of speaking to the rock. Which is why they didn't make it to the promised land. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 1 
Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 1. Tells us that dead flies make a very good ointment stink. It says, So is just one bit of foolishness in the life of a man who is known for wisdom. And many of you who will say, I have only one problem. And God should understand. After all, I'm a human being. The only problem is a little bit of anger. Uh, maybe I sleep a little too much. Maybe I have no food, just a little extra. Just one little problem is enough to destroy your journey to heaven. I explained years ago when some people are trying to argue about this uh, little problem kind of situation. I said, suppose you are at a gathering, family gathering, maybe, not too many people, <coughs> excuse me, and there is a bucket of clean water that we are all going to drink, pure water, very clean, and there is a uh, A woman there with a newborn baby. And as they were talking, the little child dedicated into her, into the whatever they call it, hmm. napping. And the woman wanted to take the child out very quickly so not as not to disturb the meeting. In the process of pouring out, a little bit of physics from that child dropped into the bucket of water. Just a little bit. Everybody should understand now. It's just, just a little bit of physics in a huge bucket of clean water. Let's go ahead and drink the water. Will you join them in drinking? Pride must be without spot. If you have one spot that is still left in your life, you better take it to God in prayer this morning. No spot, no blemish. In Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, the Bible says that when God washes you, it will make you as white as snow. White as snow. In First John chapter one verse seven, First John chapter one verse seven, he said the blood of Jesus cleanses from all sins. And if you are as white as snow, then the slightest blemish. We'll be saved from a long way off. A long way off. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, Matthew 5, verse 48, he said, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. When discussing this issue years ago, uh, I believe God is bringing it forward now because we are living at a time when people uh, believe it is alright to live carelessly. 
I remember I wrote a little booklet called As Pure as Light. I will encourage you to try and get it. A little booklet discussing this issue. And I gave an illustration. A teacher took a very wide, white cardboard and pinned it on the wall and then took a biro and with the biro he just made a point on the wide white cardboard. I turned to the students and said, what can you see? All of them without exception said, we can see a black dot. The master, that's all you can see? They say yes. What about all the white surrounding that black dot? Nobody saw the white. They saw the little blemish. But maybe I can even, I mean, we can find it easy to understand the issue of spores, the issue of blemish. What about the issue of wrinkle? That's a big one. This time, there's no spot. There's no blemish. But the dress that the bride is going to wear is wrinkled. Do you want to wear a wrinkled dress to your wedding? I was in Illinois, 1979, waiting on the Lord on this passage. And I said to, to my daddy, who was alone with me, I don't understand this issue of rainbow. Can I have a little information directly from you? And he said, oh, <laughs> you want to know? I said, yes, Lord. He said, what we are saying here is, the wedding is about to take place. The dress and the iron spotlessly clean and just before dressing the dress is hung on the wall just waiting for the time to dress and go and then the wind blew blew and one side of the dress folds on the other so that by the time the wind is over and the dress goes back to a normal place, there is one line of wrinkle all the way down. That dress would not be allowed. I asked for name, an example from the scriptures. Just in case some people think you yeah, are taking this too far. And he gave me an example in 1 Samuel chapter 25. And you can read the whole story from verse 2 to the end. 1 Samuel 25, 2 to the end. David was looking after the sheep of Nabal. Without pay, he volunteered. And then he heard that harvest time has come. Well, let me send some 
people to this man. I said, sir, we've been taking care of your flock free of charge. If you don't mind, will you send us some food? I sent the message, neighbor had, I said, who is David? Who is the son of Jesse? Everybody now is uh, running away from the master. Get away from here. Ah. <laughs> Even the servants of the man say, how can God behave like this? These people have been very good to us. So the servants told the wife, eh, what your husband has done is so hard of her. In the meantime, the servant returned, he told David, this is what the man said. David said, is that so? Uh, okay. <laughs> I will be guiltless if I deal with this man. So he mobilized his army and was on the way. In the meantime, the wife of neighbor heard what happened. Quickly she got up, got food, got uh, people to come along with her and met David on, on in the way. When you read verses 30 and 31 there in the story, verses 30 and 31, that woman said to David, What you are about to do, you are justified to do it. Too. But will you please refrain so that when you become what God wants you to become. There has been nothing in your history that you will think about and not be too sure whether you acted correctly. No wrinkle. No fighting for yourself, even when you are 100% justified. But how can anybody do all these things? Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 16, Second Corinthians 2 verse 16 says, Who is sufficient to do these things? And then Paul added, Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5, Second Corinthians 3, verse 5, our sufficiencies of God. In the Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, Second Corinthians 12, verse 9, he said, His grace is sufficient for us. Don't let anyone deceive you. Heaven is a holy place. No unclean thing is going to be there. Can I be without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle? God won't put it in the scriptures just for the fun of writing it down there. It's merely saying, lean on me and I will make it possible. Mm -hmm. If you say it is impossible, well then you are your own. If you say it's all rubbish, you can get to heaven on my own standard. Fine. You find out. Unfortunately, when it is too late for you to repent. Mm -hmm. If you lift up your hands to Him and say, Lord, I want to be everything you want me to be. Mm -hmm. I want 
to be perfect in word, I want to be perfect in deed, I want to be perfect in action, I want to be without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle. But I won't be able to do it on my own. Will you please help me? They will say, that's, that's why I'm around. That's why I've assigned the Holy Spirit to be your helper. So call on him, he will answer you. Amen. 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 Uh, you Amen. 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 Interesting, I said, the dark a low right now, not to mark a lola. We bow, we be a wish, ma, lad, or to a lying, but then you are the new. A shack and a for yahoo, a shack and a pop up. A yahoo, cherry bottom boy. Oko, fair, I yard. Oh, why do you want one baby to walk back there? Could you yell? Tell you by a low one in a day. Tell you what, perfect, I'll come back by you all and you're long away. We are both. What do you believe in that? One, if a mass of a bobo shake better, one, if a mouth, a mass on your bow, a mouth, a mouth, go to flee. Who will pass up a way later in this or jump? Time, I pray, don't talk about it, we all, or that big game. Let it. What is such a one, Professor Mijika? In the Arab University, Odo Juma Ijasa, Oko Professor, Yahoo Professor, Ungo Aya, Yahoo Aribala. So that's why I want to think think about Rafa. He likes to write a book about Oko Ini. Oko Ini, na Oko Isi, Oko Chen, Shebini, Oye Wu Arabo. Okay, I love your kind of your lonely, so fair cocoa, good, good, you find out, but I want to put it then. So I listen to what the road was. Robert Dillon, Lynn, Robert Winder, for the back way, for the wording. Oh, Mr. Sister, how do you know it? Oh, <laughs> 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 Everybody, <laughs> 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 And the but I don't know if I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going
Laura, Ewa, Nishi, Oluwa, Ejebo, and the people. Amen. <laughs> Thanking you for your goodness and mercy. Thank you that thus far you have brought us. We pray this day that your grace will be sufficient for us. Amen. That every spot, every blemish, every wrinkle remaining in our lives, your blood will wipe away today in Jesus' name. Amen. Every plant we have not planted in our lives, Father, uproot, O oh Lord. Amen. When you return, Lord God Almighty, we pray that we will all be spotlessly clean in Jesus' name. Amen. Send help to the whole world, O oh Lord. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we are free. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.